Hey everybody and welcome back to another video here at Whiteboard Medicine. We appreciate you checking it out. Today we're going to do a dive into the uh, respiratory viral se season here in the uh, US. Uh, winter is upon us and as such we're seeing a lot of respiratory viruses, particularly COVID, flu, and respiratory syncytial virus, RSV, all starting to really increase. I'm seeing a lot of it at work. Um, so we want to do a deep dive on some of the data, wastewater data, um, what of the three is going up and what time frame and all that type of stuff. So definitely stick around. No further ado, 30 second break for the introduction. We'll see you right back. Hey everybody and welcome to Whiteboard Medicine. We appreciate you checking out the video. Here at Whiteboard Medicine, our goal is to create medical education content for all types of interested learners. That includes videos, practice questions, study resources, and much more. We would love for you to join our community by subscribing, hit that bell button. We're also working to build a high yield Patreon page. It's gonna be full of practice questions, video outlines, notes, commercial free content, and much more. None of these videos are intended to be acted upon as medical advice. Please pause the video here and read this disclaimer its entirety before moving on. Thanks for sticking around. So respiratory viral season is typically, uh, at least in the northern hemisphere in the United States, uh, seen here in the winter. And we say respiratory viral season, we're really talking about these three. There's multiple viruses that can cause kind of respiratory viral symptoms, but these three are the three we primarily focus on. And the illness report from the CDC as of December 27th, shows that the amount of acute respiratory illness causing people to go seek health care uh, service is high nationally. Not surprising, right? It's the winter. I'm seeing it at work pretty frequently, pretty much every single day. Um, and what we're seeing is COVID, influenza, and RSV are actually all three increasing across the country. Now, RSV did seem to increase a little earlier than the other two and seems to be at it increasing at less of a rate than uh, influenza and COVID-19, but all three are increasing. And then due to the holidays, kind of this is a shortened version, um, but due to the holidays, we probably are going to see these numbers increase even more in the coming month as everyone's kind of gathering and together and it's winter and most people are indoors and et cetera, et cetera. So what we wanted to start with was wastewater data. If you've followed this channel for a long time, you know we're a fan of wastewater data. What wastewater data is, um, is that people actually take samples of wastewater, that's sewage, toilets, sinks, all that stuff that goes into the drains, pipes, and into the sewage plants, they take that water and they test it for different viruses. Now, why is this a really neat thing? Well, it's a really neat thing because it doesn't depend on anyone else. You don't have to depend on people going and getting tested for viruses. You don't have to depend on those tests being reported to people, collected in the right way, published in the right way. This is just a random sampling of everybody in an area, right? Because we all, in certain areas, use toilets, showers, sinks, and if we are infected with a virus, right when we are infected and start shedding that virus, it'll go into the wastewater. But I might be infected with a virus. I actually was sick two weeks ago. I didn't get tested or anything like that. Um, so whatever I had, no one will know. But if someone tested my wastewater and it was COVID flu, RSV, they would find that I did have the virus, right? Compared to if I were if you were not testing the wastewater and you were just depending on people getting tested for these viruses and then submitting it to governments for tracking, uh, that's a much imperfect science. It's also very delayed. So let's say I was going to get tested. I probably would have started shedding the virus two days into my symptoms and I probably wouldn't have gotten tested for, I don't know, three, four, five days. That test would have taken a day or two. Then that would have taken a couple days to get reported. So there's much less delay with wastewater. So it's faster. It's more thorough. And there's kind of less variables affecting the data. And this became big actually when COVID was uh, uh, some of the older generations of, of COVID, some of the previous variants. Um, they started doing wastewater testing as a way to get ahead of things. Um, and now we do it for a whole bunch of viruses. So there's going to be three different maps. The first one here is for COVID. And you can, oh, apologies for the sirens. You can see the uh, scale up at the top here with um activity level being very high, darkest, and minimal lightest. And what we can see is that there's some variability depending on geographic areas. We're seeing a lot of activity up here in kind of the um, mid-central Midwest area. Um, we're seeing a lot of activity in the Southwest. And we're seeing some activity kind of approaching the Northeast. Okay, those are kind of some of the big hotbeds. Whereas the Pier West, California, the Pier Southeast, these kind of have lower activity levels of COVID. But we are seeing a lot of high activity levels 
in these three areas. Um, this is in comparison to influenza data, right? Where influenza, we're starting to see a ton of activity in the wastewater in the West and Pacific Northwest as compared to the rest of the United States. And interestingly enough, although it's not to the very high marker in the Southwest or sorry, Southeast and just the South, we are seeing some high wastewater activity. So it's almost the opposite of the COVID data, which is interestingly enough. COVID seems to be spreading in areas where flu is not spreading as much and flu seems to be spreading in areas where COVID is not spreading as much. If we go down to RSV, respiratory syncytial virus, um, what we see is activity overall is not as high in general, right? We see less of these dark colors. Um, we do see some in the kind of the southeast, some in the west, but overall, um, spread of RSV is much lower because RSV tended to peak a little earlier. We were seeing a ton of cases a couple weeks ago, and now that is hopefully coming, the, that has been coming down, and hopefully it'll continue coming down. Um, although, obviously, it's a long season, so this might peak again. But it, overall, flu numbers seem to be going up, particularly as we mentioned in the west and the southeast. COVID numbers seem to be going up, particularly in kind of Midwest uh, as well as um, uh, Southwest. Uh, and RSV numbers are still going up in some places, but kind of compared to the other two are going down. So flu, I think, and COVID are two things that we're going to be watching out for a lot because their activity does seem to be going up in the wastewater. And usually then there's kind of increase of cases to follow over the next week or two, right? Because that wastewater picks it up right away. And then for people to seek care, they have to have symptoms. Then they have to feel worse. Symptoms have to not go away. Then they have to go to the hospital. Um, so there's kind of that delay. So we probably will see flu cases and COVID cases increasing, especially in these areas over the coming weeks post-holiday. So to keep an eye on yourself, you know, for those that... Uh, have comorbidities or um, you know compromised states or are a little older, um, these viruses still are making people sick. Um, so definitely take whatever precautions you see fit um, and keep in mind that these are starting to spread, especially in those areas. We just want to include one more graph on here, which is kind of just acute respiratory illness in general. So acute respiratory illness includes all three of those viruses as well as any other viruses that cause respiratory symptoms. And what we can see if we look at all respiratory illness, um, we're getting kind of hotbeds in the south, some of the southeast, and then some of the midwest, and then some of the west are the next um, highest. So we are seeing some respiratory illness just in general, um, the whole kind of conglomeration of viruses uh, in these areas. Uh, and this is not wastewater data. This is, I think, ED or hospital uh, presentations. So what we probably will see compared to the wastewater data is we'll start to see increases in these areas where there's more COVID and flu based on the wastewater data um, in the coming couple of weeks. So we just wanted to update you on that, do a friendly reminder, you know, that it is respiratory viral season, that COVID numbers are going up and flu numbers are going up and RSV hopefully is not going up as high as it was. Um, but for those who, you know, are worried about getting sick, uh, this is, tis the season. So uh, keep an eye out, take whatever precautions you see fit. Um, and if nothing else, um, if you're having symptoms, it could be one of those things and, and uh, try, to, try to stay away from those who are high risk for severe illness. All right, so let us know what thoughts, comments, questions you have down below. We appreciate you checking out the video. Subscribe, hit the bell button, all that good stuff. Stay well, stay healthy. Uh, happy winter, happy holidays, and we will see you all next time.